fleuri du monde devant Duomo. It was the biggest village. So this is a must see village. Are we getting out? Yeah. It used to be the biggest of all the nine villages on the battlefield that are officially uh, mort pour la France, dead for France. And among those nine villages, Fleury used to be the biggest. It was more than 400 people living here. It was big enough to have its own train station. Okay. So the building, the memorial, used to be where there was the train station. It's just crazy because when you drive here, you drive uh, through a big forest where there is nothing, you know. But think 100 years ago it, there used to be the train here so there used to be the tra train for civilians but there was also a network uh, for military trains in the narrow gauge yes, railway yeah. linking all the forts together so yes a village with 400 people uh, 422 they say in 1913 so uh, basically the village was down there so you see the white path yes that used to be the main street okay and the chapel in front of us used to be the church and so there were basically two parts of the city there was downtown that was here and there were uptown next to the station or the train station and it just got blow everything got blown up so yes so like we all these are it's all shell impacts. Yeah, yeah. These are all shells from the battle. Mm -hmm. From the battle. Wow. Sometimes they have bigger holes. It's the location, the former location of the basements of the houses. Okay. So there would be two parts in the during the battle. I mean, first you have to know it was not evacuated. The women and the children were still living here. Really. On the 21st of February 1916, they were still here. Not evacuated because a small village with no man here. They are just doing farming. So not a target for the Germans. So they were still here. They were, were evacuated in emergency uh, after the 21st February. They waited until the 24th, but after that there, were, there no was way. nobody anymore. And you are this is located, this is the maximum advance of the Germans. Mm -hmm. They just got a little further down there because you have a French powder depot. And the Germans wanted to grab that mm -hmm. depot. That was their uh, goal. So the Germans had reached the fort of Daumont on the 25th of February, it's two kilometers north. Okay. They had made eight kilometer advance in the four days before. Okay, so. Let me just get my bearings. That way's north. Yeah. Okay. I got turned around. This is north and Verdun is down there. So right, right. This is the last hill. And now it goes down right. directly to Verdun. So here, when the, the Germans had passed that, you know, it, it's down before it goes up. Yes. And now it's the last slope Holy directly cow. to Verdun. Yeah. So it was the last straight line yeah. for the Germans and um, so unfortunately for those Germans they only reached here on the 23rd of June okay that took so, a long time yes but. so think of that between 21st February and 25th February the Germans moved eight kilometers and then in the next four months they moved two more kilometers only because the French had started reacting and opposed sure. a resistance. So that's why they only reached here at the end of June, 23rd of June. So let me let me ask you this. Yeah. Sir. On the first day, February 21st, mm -hmm. was it, how many soldiers, just the 2,500? Um, how many soldiers were here? Because you were talking about how they took them all to the Somme, Wait, right? Yeah, yeah. But there were some here, enough to stop it or slow it down. Mm -hmm. 
So, so basically, in all the forts around Ferda, there were something like 200,000 French soldiers. Okay. Uh, but they were dispatched in all those right. forts. So it's all the region of Verda. I'm not talking about Verdun battlefield specifically. Sure. They were in the region. Yeah. I mean, every young man in <laughs> France was involved in this. Yeah. I mean, they took it, got everybody. Mm -hmm. it's what I know is that the French army was 3.5 million in 1914. I don't know the exact amount in 1916 during the battle. And I know at the end of the war, all the French men involved in World War I. Uh, it's a total of 8 million, Jeez. of which 1.4 million died. Yeah. And I, I don't have the exact number of wounded people. It must be something like 3 million. Yeah, because it's usually three times as many. Yeah. yeah, so they have lost an arm or a leg, or they have been yeah. badly uh, damaged in the face. You know, they have no face anymore. Or, you have those things. So yes, I don't have the exact amount of the French army in 1916, but I can tell you this, there were 200,000 uh, at the beginning. And in front of them, they had something like half a million Germans preparing to fight in <laughs> Verdun. Yeah. So on the 21st, you know, they bombed all day, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the day, they sent Germans walking troops. And that first wave, they were something like 30,000 only. But you must imagine 30,000 people walking, marching on you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's still a lot. Yes, a it, lot it is, for sure. So. They were kind of stopped and they knew that on the 1st of July, the French would attack in the Somme. So for the Germans, that was the very last chance offensive. So you can remember the 23rd of June it is a huge day of bombing again. You have the 21st is crazy. They almost sent one million shell shells in that one day only. And you can compare with the 23rd of June, which is a huge amount of shells sent also. So they conquered. It was successful. They conquered uh, that village, but they only conquered that village. They were able to grab it, but not to go any further. Well, they, they took the powder depot, but they could not send more troops following. So it became clear at the beginning of July that the Germans would never make it to Verdun. But it was very close. A lot of brave people stopped that. Yeah. So uh, it's the maximum advance of the Germans. Uh, they launch a very final offensive on the 11th of July. That's it. They could not do more because the battle in the Somme had started. I forgot to mention also on the Russian front, they had the Brusilov Offensive, 4th of June. So they had to take away troops, soldiers from Verdun. So it was Falken Ein, uh, the German uh, general leading the battle here. And after the 12th of July, Falkenstein was told by the Kronprinz, the German uh, emperor, he was told, no, you just say defensive, you don't attack anymore. So they had officially lost because their goal was to conquer Verdun right. and th that would never happen after so many losses. Oh, this is good. But it's a bit burnt. I don't know why we are here. So oh, here. this like got lit on fire. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I don't weird. Know what happened? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. You see Colonel Crian? We oui. headquarters. We oui. in the Bois de Corps. Bois de Corps is famous, and the front line at the beginning of 1916 was something like that. Okay. So he was killed on the 22nd of February, and then the German moved whoo, to the fort of Domont, which is here. So in just four days. 
and then four months to make the rest here. And this is where we are. And this is where we are. So all these other villages have been completely destroyed and could not be rebuilt. So they are officially dead for France, more mm -hmm. pour la France. But the thing is that the Germans just went through. And when they arrived here, they bombed it on the 23rd June. Already there was not much left of the village. And then the French and the Germans have been fighting two more months in the ruins of the village. So Fleury is really extreme. It's been bombed for two months, at least. Yeah. It had been bombed before in March, April, May, but a little. Well, not that little, it's Verdun. <laughs> but the biggest bombings were in the summer. And actually, when you see this, the, the Germans were on the other side and the houses were a bit down the hill. So mm -hmm. they were kind of protected. You know, a few shells uh, bounced. Oh, yeah. And, it, and went over, over the houses. So most of the damage was because of the French. When they attacked back, they were going up the hill from there. Yeah. And that's mostly the French that destroyed that village. But yeah, they, they sent enough shells to destroy that village a hundred times. So uh, the thing is, I told already 50 or 60 depends. 50 million shells, sometimes mm -hmm. you can read 60, sometimes I read only 40 million shells were shot. That's Still, incredible. It's a lot. Oh if man. If you do the mathematics, uh, you have six shells for every square meter on average that have fallen. It, just to manufacture that much. Mm -hmm. that much munitions, ammunition. So I mentioned all those shell falling because when it's raining that huge amount of metal on your head, you need to protect yourself. So every single thing on the battlefield that could protect you, you would use it. Sure. And after the village has been evacuated at the end of February, it became a camp not a camp well a protection or yeah a protection a shelter for the french soldiers so they mostly went into the basements of the house because you're protected from shells a little it's better than nothing so either it became a headquarter to take a decision to make mm -hmm. maps or commanding or it became an emergency, you know, hospitals. And by the way, one of the road access from the city of Verdun was right down after this little hill. So uh, Fleury became... Oh my God. Fleury became like a, a hub. Sure. You know, all the soldiers by thousands, they arrived here and then they were dispatched. So they were told, you go on that little front here on Bois de Vos Chapitres. You will fight here um, next to Fleury up the hill. You will have to fight there in, in Chaumont, for example. So they kind of stayed a few hours here and then they went. They went off. So a lot of soldiers have come here, the French soldiers. And they died here because, yeah. What, see these white posts? It's the former streets. The what? The streets. Oh, okay, the former VA. streets, yeah. Wow, this is fascinating. Flurry. Here it's just in German and French, they compare the two fates of two villages. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. A French village, a uh, German village that was destroyed by the, in the Napoleonian War. Okay. So, Hohenlinden in, in Bavaria. So it's almost the same, completely, completely destroyed. So maybe the Germans' revenge. So I start with this sign here. It's a good introduction. 
Well, I've told you a lot already. So it's the place where they discovered in 2013, they discovered 26 French soldiers' bodies, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. From the battle? Yeah, from, from like Verdun. Uh, EC here? Yeah, right here. Right here. Mm -hmm. That's why they put the sculpture here. Oh, man. <laughs> so that the, is it, crazy. <laughs> how That's, how did they, like water and erosion, uncovered them? No, they, they were doing some works. They were preparing for the centennial of okay. the hundred anniversary of the Battle of Verdun. So they had big uh, bulldozers, and they found those. So th that's pretty uh, uh, representative of what happened here. So I told you from February to June, they used this village as a camp. So all the basements either became commanding posts or emergency posts for mm -hmm. you know small hospitals. So they had many soldiers, wounded soldiers in those basements. And when they bombed like crazy, the Germans bombed like crazy on the 23rd, many of those houses collapsed and they collapsed on the wounded soldiers or already dead, maybe. So that day, everybody forgot about those 26 bodies that they had left here. And they only found them in 2013. 97 years later. Yeah. They still find individuals in the woods regularly, you know, who are a bone or but here, yeah, they, that was a big big discover. They haven't found something big since then. So here they remind us um, that the battle killed 300,000 soldiers, French and Germans, which is very convenient for us because it's a 10 months long battle, 10 months is 300 days, and it's 300,000 kills. Oh my god. An average of 1,000 a day, which is not so much after all, because you know the Battle of the Somme is 440,000 kills. Yeah. And the Battle of the Somme is only 5 months long. So it's much deadlier than Verdun. But I heard Verdun, like total casualties are over a million of dead and wounded. Um, I've, I've read that I somewhere. have in mind 0 0.7 million on the total. Okay. So and I'm going to go with what you say. <laughs> you know, I was not born back then, so yeah. everything I tell you is what I've read. Yeah. If I read something wrong, I will tell you something wrong. Okay, sure. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it depends also on the book, you, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so they say that the, that crazy um, battle destroyed completely many of the villages above Verdun and destroyed many areas of the city of Verdun. Here they mention the 25th, I don't know why, I everywhere I read it. It was the 23rd. Okay. Well, doesn't make a big difference. More, that means dead, right? Mm -hmm. More is dead. Yeah. Dead for France. And they say that the village changed hands and was taken and retaken and re retaken, blah, 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 16 times. Oh. 16 times. 16. You can discuss this. You know, sometimes the French attacked and were only successful in taking back two houses, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And they counted it like they took the village back, which is not really... So, but, you know, it was, uh, how do you call it, Stale stalemate? Stalemate, yeah. For nearly two months. The village has been liberated for good, of the village, the ruins, what was left of it. Sure was liberated for goods by uh, the Moroccans on the 18th of August. Really? So between the 23rd of June and 18th August, they were fighting here. Mm -hmm. 
It's like you are French, you were here, and the Germans were on the road there. Yeah. So it was a lot of grenades because they were so close together. A lot mm. of hand to hand too, probably. Like, I guess it has happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they discovered those bones, rapidly identified as those of 26 French poilus. You have to remember that name, poilu. Poilu. Mm -hmm. A poil in French is a hair. So basically, the poilu is it means the hairy ones. I thought chevu was. It's both. Okay, the hairy ones. <laughs> yeah. Why do they call them the hairy ones? <laughs> so because they could not shave. Oh, sure. Um, remember this, because if you tell wherever you go, you, you tell a French person, you say the word poilu, he will automatically think. Soldier World War One. Really? French soldier. Yeah. It, that's so that's famous. That's it. Oh, okay. Poilu. Yeah. Poilu. Um, so they say um, what I told you already. They had put them, those soldiers, in the basements because they were already dead because of their wounds. But in the bombing, everything collapsed. So they could they could identify only seven of them. They identified them. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of uh, like dog tag? Exactly. Okay. Yes. So among those seven, they were able to reach three uh, families of them. So one of them said uh, soldiers Caillou. So Caillou, Caillou, Caillou this one, and Jean Silly. Um, they were given back to their families in November 13. And the granddaughter of Mr. Perlong, she said she wanted her grandfather to rest next to his comrades. So they buried the, all, all the four mm -hmm. or five that were not given back to their families. And all the unknown soldiers were buried at the ossuary. Okay, so this is his birth date? Yep. So he was older. Yep. But... 1894. Mm -hmm. Oh, four. So he was 26. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 20. Thanks for doing the math. <laughs> <laughs> he was 20 at the beginning of the war. Yeah. Wow. Uh, no, I said hey, he was 22. Yeah, he was 22. Sorry. Oh, wow. That's very, very interesting.